striving to save a Penn State legacy. That's right now in motion. By now, most of us have heard about elm yellows, the disease that is spread by tiny insects that threatens the elm population in different portions of the U.S., especially the elms at University Park. With more than 200 existing elms, Penn State has one of the largest elm tree stands in the Northeast, as well as the country. So when elm yellows began to decimate elm tree populations near University Park, Penn State officials became alarmed. You know, a couple years back when we did our first public announcement about elm yellows, uh, you know, the word of the day at that point was there was not a lot of reason to be optimistic. Because of all the diseased trees around us currently, uh, we're actually seeing a, a kind of a resurgence of Dutch elm disease. And currently we have five or six trees on the University Park campus that are infected. We're working with it. Uh, the crews are doing a great job. Uh, we have some techniques to try to manage that, but it does complicate the efforts of the team. With the threat of losing a large piece of Penn State history and culture, the Landscape Department decided to leverage the vast knowledge base of the university's plant pathology and entomology departments to fight back. The elm yellow seems to be doing here at Penn State what it's done in many other locations, and that is move into an area, kill quite a few trees, and then not move very far. Gary Mormon, a professor of plant pathology at Penn State, has been active along with Greg Hoover in entomology and others in the university community trying to understand the leafhoppers that are spreading elm yellows. There are two diseases attacking elm trees at Penn State and the surrounding area, Dutch elm disease and elm yellows. Both are transmitted by insects. Dutch elm disease makes its way by the native and European elm bark beetle and elm yellows via leafhoppers. At the University Park campus, landscaping crews keep the elm bark beetle at bay with at least two control applications per year. And that has been quite successful. The elm leafhopper, on the other hand, has proven to be a dilemma. To properly control for an insect, landscapers must be able to know when the optimal time for application comes. Catching several insects in traps and examining them to see if they are carriers of elm yellows is a part of the protocol. Unfortunately, last year the plant pathology department wasn't successful in capturing many live leafhoppers that are necessary to determine which leafhoppers are actually able to move elm yellows from tree to tree and which do not. But in the midst of all that, Dr. Mormon noticed a decline in the occurrence of elm yellows among elms being treated for the bark beetle a potential carrier of Dutch elm disease, which suggested that one control was suppressing both insects. The trees on campus that are sprayed regularly, only a very few of them had elm yellows. Whereas just off campus, where we ceased spraying elms because the neighbors asked not to have their property sprayed, a lot of elms were killed there. And it was just, they were so close to campus, I don't think it's just a coincidence that the ones just off campus had elm yellows and the ones on campus didn't. I think the difference was those just off campus were not being sprayed and the ones are cam on campus are being sprayed. With all that said, current and past Penn Staters are left wondering, where do we stand as far as the future of the Penn State elms? So we just have to wait and see. Uh, to some extent, I'm optimistic because last year uh, about 50 trees were removed on campus. And then this year, we're removing a few more, but there's still trees that are outside the area where we usually spray. Um, the concern was uh, that with the wet summer last year that we saw a reduction in the number of trees that were infected, mostly because of weather conditions. Um, this year uh, we had a, a dry April and, and um, if the vector populations continue we could see some increases there. One of the ways that the folks in the surrounding community could help is to remove diseased trees from their property um, and support you know, the, their municipalities to do the same. Stay tuned because this story is definitely to be continued. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.